In 1993, a man was found chopped up into 18 pieces and this news shocked the whole of Malaysia. Today, we're going to look into Malaysia's most infamous killer, Mona Fendi. From a very young age, Masna Ismail had always dreamed of a life of fame and stardom. With that, she married her husband, Mohammed Noor Afandi Abdul Rahman, who promised to help her fund her quest to become Malaysia's biggest pop star. Masna adopted the stage name Mona Fendi to boost her popularity and together with her husband, she produced and launched a studio album titled Diana and even made several TV appearances. After several years, Mona's career in pop stardom hit rock bottom, pushing the couple to make a career switch and earn a living as Bomos instead. One day, sometime between 2nd and 8th July 1993, the couple was approached by Datuk Mazlan Idris, a Pahang assemblyman and rising politician. Datuk Mazlan wanted to boost his political career, so he asked the couple to help him. Mona agreed to help and gave him a talisman consisting of a tongkat and a songkok supposedly owned by former Indonesian President Sukamo. Mona told Datuk Mazlan that the talisman would make him invincible. In exchange, Datuk Mazlan paid 2.5 million ringgit for their services and 10 land titles as guarantee for the remaining payment. Shortly after the payment, Mona told Datuk Mazlan to meet her at her home in Raup Pahang for a cleansing ritual. Mona instructed Datuk Mazlan to lie on the floor face up while she placed flowers on him. She then told Datuk Mazlan to close his eyes and wait for the money to fall from the sky. Juraimi, her assistant, then used an axe and chopped Datuk Maslan's head off. They then chopped his body into 18 parts and buried the body in a nearby storeroom. Life went on as usual for Mona and her husband. With the money, Mona bought a Mercedes-Benz, went on a shopping spree and even got herself a facelift. On July 2nd, a police report was made on Maslan's disappearance after he withdrew 300,000 ringgit from a bank and missed several AMNO functions. In July 13, 1993, Juraimi was caught by police for drug use and brought the police to his home in Uludong. While the police did a search at the house, they found videotapes, pictures, and newspaper cuttings that belonged to Maslan. Juraimi was questioned but refused to tell officers anything as he said that he only took orders from Afandi and he would not tell anything until Afandi approves it. The next day, Mona and Afandi were arrested and Afandi was brought to the police station and after a long interrogation, Afandi finally gave up and allowed Juraimi to show the police where Datuk Maslan's body was buried. When they recovered the body, some parts of Maslan's body were never found. It was rumoured that Mona and Afandi had eaten them. On September 12, 1994, they were tried in Tamalo High Court by a seven-person jury the High Court found all three suspects guilty and sentenced them death by hanging. Throughout the trial, Mona appeared cheerful, consistently smiling and even posing for press photographers. She also remarked, Looks like I have many fans. Mona, Afandi and Juraimi were finally hung at Kajang Prison on November 2nd. During Mona's execution, she uttered these three chilling words that still send shivers down people's spine. She said, Aku takkan mati, meaning I will never die, while remaining calm and smiling. Are you a fan of digging up stories of Malaysia's notorious criminals? Like, share and subscribe to our channel and let us know which stories you would like us to dig up next.